All right, our phone numbers are 216 578 or 216 578 Let me go to my 650 gold line here. Uh, Dick, you're in the air, Dick. Hey, Trev, how are you? Good. Here's something that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. That the big time football, 67% of all the kids that play football graduate on time mm-hmm. compared to the regular public, which is 55% of the time. Mm-hmm. That's pretty interesting. So that must mean they, some colleges do a great job of making sure their people graduate on time. How about giving the kids some credit? Oh, well, sure, but it's, but it's the kind of kid you recruit. Like Northwestern, 92% of their kids graduate on time. Bingo. Bingo. Notre Dame and Duke, 96%. Exactly. And also, too, a- athletes are more dedicated human beings in most cases than just people that aren't because it takes a lot of sacrifice, unbeknownst to a lot of people, to participate athletically, lead a social life, and an academic life. That's sure. not easy. It's, it's not easy. I used to play football as well. And the, and the general public doesn't get an education for free. A lot of those people don't finish school because they can't afford to finish school. There's another well, good point. Well, that's a point, too. But a lot of people get hurt in college, too, as, a, as an athlete. And they, and they have a hard time continuing their college education that way. Ohio State's in the bottom of the barrel. They're at 62% compared to Northwestern at 92. Penn State, 85. Iowa, 74. Michigan, 71. They have higher standards to get in, though. They get smarter I, athletes. I agree, I agree with you. They do. Those schools require a better kind of student. You can't play football there unless you're a good student. I, I'm, uh, you know, and, and, and thank you for the phone call. And point well taken. Very good phone call, Dick. Thank you very much. But I think a lot of people out there just don't give the kid enough credit. You know, the coach, the coach, the coach, the coach, the coach. Get your man. That coach ain't coming and dragging your ass out of bed and getting you to school or making you uh, stay up late at night to study for a test. He may tell you, or she may tell you, but the kid has to do it, has to have that dedication. That is in some people and not in others. That's why it's the same way in business. It's the same way in life. It's the same way in love. It's the same way in everything. Dedication. There are people that are very dedicated to whatever it is I just mentioned. And there are certain people that aren't. Do not. Just take a relationship or love or something like that. There are people that will not work at it. First sign of trouble, they run. Right or wrong? Absolutely. That's why we're divorcing at a 50% rate in this country. Where a partnership in marriage or love or whatever you want to call it in today's day and age takes work, takes dedication. I mean, I got people out there listening to me right now going, damn, Triv, you're right on the money there. If you're objective, you know how, 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 how tough it is to make a relationship work? There's always arguments, there's always stumbling blocks, and it's very easy to throw your hands up and say, I'm gone. That's the easy way. But two people that have that type of dedication and that type of mindset will work those things out in most cases. Some people will just run in a, in a, in a, in a split second. Same way with athletics. You see, I don't know how many uh, who's listening out there. If you've if you've gone to college, I haven't. All right, but I've talked to enough people to understand the dedication it takes to play sports, succeed academically, and still have a social life. So you're not an absolute just hermit, locked up somewhere. I mean, go back to when you were. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. Your social life was at the, was the most important yes. thing to you. What do you think? These kids are robots? Some kids handle it better than others. And right away, we want to give the coach all the credit. Well, Trussell graduates. Trussell graduates my ass. He graduates nobody. Kids do that. Give them the credit. WTA, oops, these phones. WTA M eleven hundred. You're in the air. Triv, Mega Dago's first time caller. Hold on a second. Hold on. Don't try to do it yourself. Ah! I'm okay. 
No, I'm not. Go to AbsoluteRoofingInc.com. Hey, look, I just wanted to, uh, I didn't catch you earlier, and I know usually you've got a lot of common sense and a lot of, uh, a, a different point of view, the triv, the triv take. Uh, so I just want to throw this out there. Do you think Trestle's just taking the fall? Do you think he told his bosses and they just threw him under the bus knowing that he is so highly respected that they figure, uh, we'll throw Trestle under the bus, he'll get a little bit of flack, but not nearly as much as Ohio State as a whole would get if found out that the higher-ups knew all along and that, uh, that they didn't do anything about it. I think it would be a little easier to swallow if, if, it was, if they put it on trestle as opposed to, the, uh, to the, the athletic director or the president of the university. What do you think about that? Without a doubt, Dan. I mean, that's a great point. That is a great point. They got the perfect guy to deflect right. all the criticism, okay? Look at the media, how the media has handled this. If this was just your average coach... If this was John Cooper, the media would be crucifying right now. The media has a hard time criticizing. We had a guy on. I didn't. I mean, am I get in trouble for this if I bring up Galetti? No. No. Oh, uh, you don't mind? Um. Okay. All right. We had a guy that. Uh, give you an example of how the media works. Okay. We had a guy in here yesterday, Chuck Galetti, and I'm not knocking Chuck. I'm trying to make a point here. Okay. I wasn't here today. I don't know if you listened yesterday, Dan, but Chuck Galetti did the show, right? Sure. He avoided the topic because he didn't want to criticize Trestle because Trestle's a friend of his. You see what I, I'm saying here? Sure, and that's, I, that's what I'm thinking, man. He's just a fall guy. Exactly. I mean, that, 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 I, I got to go to traffic. That is a great point that I overlooked, and I'm jealous that I overlooked that. That is a great point. They have the perfect guy to deflect all the criticism down there and just give him a slap on the wrist. Perfect guy. Because if it was another type of coach who didn't have the perception of being this nice guy with the sweater vest and everything, the media would be attacking like Piranha, they'd be attacking right now. The media has a hard time criticizing this guy. How many media people have you heard? All the talk shows you've heard, all the articles have you read? I mean, some, yes, but some have gone, oh, Jim's a nice guy. He graduates this. You're the callers today. He graduates his student. Uh, come on. That's a great point. A perfect guy to deflect the criticism there and just give him a slap on the wrist and move on, even though Ohio State season's destroyed next year. Hey, don't forget, you can hear Joe Tate and Andre Knott, 705 tonight right here on the big one. Joe Tate uh, will be interviewed by Andre Knott, so you can hear that, 705 right here on the big one. Uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Hey, Trev. Yeah. I, I look slightly different take on what you've been talking about. I agree with you that there's a lot of people that don't want to criticize uh, uh, Trussell or uh, Ohio State. Um, and that last caller that you had, I think he made an excellent possible point as well, that maybe they are making him the fall guy. Uh, personally, I'm an Ohio State fan. I'm not wild about Trussell as a coach. Uh, you know, I think his play calling is, is extremely routine, and you know, I think everybody in the stadium knows what's coming next. The question, though, I think is, do you think that he was malicious in attempting to uh, cheat the system, or do you think he made an honest mistake? You get someone like Pete Carroll, he knew what he was doing, and he knew he was going to get caught, so he beat Pete, left USC, and he he, uh, headed for the NFL. No, he he got the emails, he got the warning what those players were doing, and he covered it up, but he knew exactly what they were doing, and his responsibility, if he has integrity, me personally, I'd have done the same thing Trestle did. I'd have covered it up because I want to win. I don't want them players, them five players to go down because them five, five players are key players. So, no, he didn't make an honest mistake. He knew what the hell he was doing. He was trying to win. Okay. Well, and, I, I don't think he was out to uh, try to cheat the system. I, if, you, if you heard the, the uh, press conference <laughs> last night, you either, you either accept that the way they put it forward was, in fact, what happened, or you think that somebody, whether it was Trestle or the school itself, was trying to get around. Yeah. They knew that sooner or later it was going to come out. Well, I, 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 tell you, I don't know. If you bought that press conference yesterday, wow. At a press conference where a coach is telling you that he lied, how can you believe anything that he's saying at the press conference? And what, what you've been talking about, he just illustrated. You had, He's not Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll's one of those dirty coaches. We've got Jim Trestle. Jim Trestle just told you that he lied and cheated. 
He is Pete Carroll. He's the same coach. He will do anything to win. He just finally got caught. Yes. And there there are probably other things that went on also. Do you think this is the only thing that went on there? I, it's just so hard to argue with Ohio State fan. It really is. You know, I mean, Ohio State fan has this as one of the best universities in the country, football-wise. Football-wise, we're talking only football here now. Right? In my lifetime, they won two national championships, 68 and 2002. Took them 34 years to win a championship. And, and, and they've won two in my lifetime. Two. How is that? <laughs> I mean, that's what I, it kills me about Ohio State fan. What are you telling me? That they're good every year? Well, yeah, you want to believe that your team's the best. You know, they're good, yeah, they're but, good, but good is, what is good? Oh, I don't know. Not good enough. You, you know what you get? You know what you get for being good? A pat on the back. Nice job, son. Yeah. Just weren't good enough this year, but nice job, you were good. They tried really hard. Yeah. I mean, a lot of effort. Two championships in my lifetime. And they're a football powerhouse? You got to be kidding me. Right? I would think. I would hope you were kidding me. WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Yep. Yep. Hello? Yes. Yep. Uh, two, two comments I want to make, and I'm uh, calling from Denver. Um, uh, you know, I think that uh, I partially agree with about the student, the athlete, the wrestler, football player. He does, he does do the work. But uh, I've competed in numerous sports in my life. In fact, that was... Um, competed in boxing in Cleveland way back in the 70s. I live in Denver now. But but uh, I can tell you in my life, not only having a great father, but uh, I've had a couple of mentors in my life. One was an athletic coach. One was a college professor. And, you know, these people can instill discipline in you. They can change your life. And so and I'm not I'm not like totally siding with Trestle saying, you know, he graduates all these people. Absolutely the student does the work. No. But those coaches are very, very important if they're no. good people no. and they're good coaches and they can instill passion in you. But uh, that that's no. my one comment. The other one is You're totally wrong there. You're totally wrong, but go ahead. Well, I, 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 and I and I'll give you an example when you're done, but go ahead. That. That's your opinion. I have no, it's not an opinion. I'm gonna give you a fact, okay? I'll tell you what else. Yeah, one of my nephews was a wide receiver at St. Ignatius High School. And I know I know that Coach Kyle is a great coach. And without him, my nephew may not have been as good as he was. All right. You know? All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I understand. I, I got to go to news here. I just want to respond to that, okay? And I'll respond, respond by not giving you an opinion. I'll, I'll respond by giving you some facts, okay? And not to try to be a, a wise guy here or anything, but just let me give you some facts about it. Uh, instilling a, a, what did he say? A desire. Discipline. Discipline. Yeah. Okay. Integrity, desire, discipline, whatever you want. It, it doesn't work that way. That is a fallacy. My parents spent, and this is where I can talk firsthand. My parents, and this is how I know what I'm talking about here. My parents spent as much time with me as they did with my brother Gary. They tried to instill discipline, <laughs> integrity. <laughs> they tried to install everything into me, the same as they tried to install into my brother. My parents were great parents, okay? I was no friggin' good and resisted all of it because I just didn't have it in me to accept it. My brother accepted it and turned out to be a much different type of person growing up than I was. So you cannot take an individual... <laughs> And install discipline in them. You cannot do it. In it, you can't. In some you can. In some you can't. But the ones you can install it in are the ones that have it in them to accept it. They will. You could. It, it, the, the janitor could install discipline into a person that has that type of personality. So, does that make any sense? Some people just don't accept. It's the kid. It's the kid. There's bad kids. There's good kids. They come from the same household. Why, if you can, with the same parents who did the same job on the two children. So why can't, why does one kid turn out bad and one kid turn out good? 
if it's the same parents in the same direction and everything else because it's what's inside the individual person. This is what you people are missing. No friggin' coach is going to make somebody an academic scholar. The kid makes himself an academic scholar. Yeah. You know, I, I just really am really confused about how people look at certain people and they will not criticize. There's just certain people they will not criticize, and there's certain people they'll crucify. And, you know, the media plays a big part in that. I'll give you an example, two people, Jim Trussell, Sarah Palin. Two different ends of the spectrum, don't get me wrong there, okay? But Sarah Palin, if she blows her nose, she gets criticized. Jim Trussell can admit that he cheated, and it was cheating, oh, by the way. Because if he'd have turned these kids in, they would have been suspended for the games that they won. So that's cheating. He admits that he cheated, and no no one wants to criticize him. Well, it's Jim, he's Jim Trestle. He's the classiest right. man in football. Sarah Palin bends over to pick something up for somebody, and they'll tell her that she's, uh, they'll criticize her for showing her ass, mm-hmm. trying to say she's doing that just to get votes. Or, I mean, it's amazing. It just amazes me. And to think that Trussell instills integrity or whatever you want to call it, dedication, motivation, I mean, it don't work that way. I mean, God, parents should know that better than anybody. I mean, if you're a, I mean, look how different kids can be. Now, some of you parents get lucky, and all your kids turn out to be the same. But some parents out there, most parents, know exactly what I'm talking about. They have multiple children. You could work your ass off with one, and that one won't listen to you one bit. You tell him or her to go left, she goes right. You tell her to go straight, she backs up. And then the other one listens to everything you say. And you put the same amount of time, the same dedication in with both children. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, because that's what's in the kid. It's what's inside the person. All right, isn't the the coach's job, though, to bring that out of that person? The coach's job is the coach. Can't the coach actually bring that out of you, though? Bring what out of you? Bring out what's inside of you to be able to be motivated and that kind of stuff? Well, if he could... Then why are why did these five guys break the law? Because again, maybe they don't have what you're talking about. But what I'm saying oh. is, good coaches can do that. I think a no. coach's job is to win football games. That is his only job. If if Coach Trussell was just the nicest guy and graduated 100 percent of his students and lost to Michigan every year, he would be fired. Fired. Well, I agree with you on that, Goldman. All, all I'm saying is, I think that coaches do have a role in how you behave and how you act in life. Well, yeah, as long they can you, bring that out of you. They, they, as long as it's there, is is it's got to be there, though, Seth. Right, is my I point. I understand that. I understand that. I mean, you're arguing with yourself here. Not really. And you lost. It has to. <laughs> how do I do that? <laughs> if I agree with well, you, will both be wrong. <laughs> it it has to be inside of that person. I mean, when t- when I was in school and teachers told me something, I did just the opposite, out of spite. That's the kind of person I was. I don't, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm trying to make a point here. Right. If they told me don't touch it, I touched it. If they said touch it, I say I ain't touching that. No one tells Mike Trevisano what to do. Exactly. That's the type of horrible attitude I had in me. Still got some of it today. <laughs> <laughs> Go to traffic. Don't take a phone call. Why not? Because I'm telling you to go to traffic. It's too early. No, go to traffic now. For real? No. <laughs> I just knew you wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> I thought maybe I was missing something there. <laughs> so was I, thought, I. I thought 480 blew up or something. I started panicking. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Let me go to my 650 gold line. Uh, Jim, you're in the air, Jim. Jim, you there? Oh, no. I don't know where Jim went. I don't know. Maybe. Rich, you're in the air, Rich. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good. Good. Tell me, who, what power, what powerhouse team do you, like, support or or is your favorite team, or I should say, and college football? Do you have a favorite college football team? Yeah, probably Ohio State. Okay. but and, and I do agree, like you said, he got caught cheating, and it took a long time. But I, I just, 
I don't know. Uh, do you really think with uh, with him being caught cheating is going to make a difference at all in the program? No. You think? No. No, not at all. Okay, and then my other question is, do you think Woody Hayes ever did any of this and just never got caught? Yes. Woody did a lot of things in his time. Yes. Woody, 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 Woody would Woody would have ate your eyeballs if it meant right. to, to. Yeah, I mean they all. My point is they all do it, Rich. No, I understand, Mike. I, yeah. and I agree with you, and you're right. And they shouldn't put him on a pedestal and think he's the best thing walking right now because he he has shamed the program. And and, and, and let me say this to you, uh, as let, let let me just say this to you. You don't think this is the first time Trestles ever did anything wrong? Oh, oh, definitely not. You're <laughs> absolutely right. I agree with you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the first time he got caught. You're right, and he, you're right. And now, and I bet you any money, that more things are going to come out, even if he didn't do them here, if he did them at Youngstown State or wherever else he was at. Well, things are going to things are going to start coming out now. I, I don't know if things will come out, and I, and I hope they don't for his sake, but uh, I don't think the media will do that to him because he's not a media target. And that's my point I made earlier. Some guys are media targets, and the media loves to go after Jim Trussell. They sort of dance around. I don't know. We'll see what comes out of this. Jim, are you there, Jim? Obviously, Jim is gone. Let me go to uh, Nadine, I think it is here. Uh, Nadine, you're in the air. Hey, Trev. Yes. Carlos. Wait a minute. Hold on a second here. Wait a minute. Don't try to do it yourself. Oh, ah! I'm okay. Oh, no, I'm not. Go to AbsoluteRoofingInc.com. With all, this, with all this rain, you better call Absolute Roofing, too. Nadine, what's on your mind? You know, I just... I have a comment. I have five kids, and they are all different. Yeah. All different, and they'll all do everything different in anything that they're doing. And I just love you, first-time caller, and Kumbar, and I don't know what you guys are talking about or heard something about Trestle, but I just need to tell that everybody out there knows that. And, 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 they all- and Nadine, what works with one does not work with the other. Will you put- Absolutely. I mean, I have them range from 24 to 15, right. and they're all different. They yeah. all want to go to college to be become something different. They all want to go to different colleges. I mean, well, you're lucky you got them all that want to go to college. You, you might have one that doesn't even want to get educated. No, they all. Yeah, at least at least you got at least you got that going for you. You know, I raised three children. Uh, I know a little bit about raising kids. All right, not a lot, but a little. My problem was I had them too young and didn't spend enough time with them. I mean, if I had anything to do over, it probably would be spend more time with my kids. But I was young and whatever. And when you're young, you're dumb. And as you get older, you get smarter. That's just a natural progression in life. And if you don't think that happens, well, then you're going to wind up in jail or dead. Because if you don't get smarter as you get older, you got a huge headache. You really do. <laughs> yeah. Because there's things today that I look back at that I did yesteryear that I wouldn't even think about doing today. And that's only because I'm smarter. But if you think that you can take Jim Trussell can instill dedication into somebody I mean, I, I know you must live in fantasy land. Otherwise, if he could do all this, if he was, he would do it with every player, not just the selected few. <laughs> right. If you can actually instill, it's already there. You're not instilling anything. Well, here, he's, let's say he's got 150 players. Sure. Okay. I love the guy that called me earlier. 32 out of 150 are academic All-Americans. Jim Trestle did that. Why didn't he do it for the other 174 eight or whatever the hell it is? Right. Why did he let them go? He didn't like them on their other seventy no, eight. He just they didn't get along, so he didn't want to instill anything in them. I mean, you know what stupid people say what a sound when they talk like that? Yeah. Well, Jim Trussell instilled this and that and da da da. When you break it down like that, and only twenty percent of your students are really good at school, that's not so great. I know, I, and I'm all get into this, but I know certain situations growing up in my lifetime where kids instill dedication into the coach. The kids were more dedicated than the coach was. The coach just had to be there because he had to be there. Have you ever had that experience? Oh, yeah. Especially in <laughs> high school. Yes. There's some high school coaches 
to give two craps about coaching. They're getting some extra money, and they're just there. And all of a sudden, now comes a group of a special kids, a group of special kids. They instill dedication into the coach. Time now to get you home with traffic. This traffic brought to us by Kia Motors and your local Toyota dealers. And I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that understand what I'm talking about. There's some coaches that never, ever wanted to coach. Okay? They were doing it strictly for the money or for whatever reason it was. And all of a sudden, along comes a group of kids that were really dedicated themselves and really wanted to win. They used to push the coach. I'm not going to name anybody and embarrass anybody, but I've seen that happen in my lifetime. I've had that happen. Yeah. Yeah. You sh- you show up, and then the other person's just there because you have to have an adult there. Right. That adult doesn't want to be there. No. <laughs> They're there for the money. Exactly. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, you get a group of kids that are really dedicated or people, whatever it is, adults, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And all of a sudden, they're pushing, they're motivating the coach. Mm-hmm. And then the coach says, oh, this is cool. Yeah, hey, I'm kind of <laughs> enjoying this now. This is how this works. That was redundant. Ken, you're in the air. Hey, Trev, how are you today? I uh, have to tell you, I disagree with your broad statements about coaches not being able to inspire kids or, or their, their, their players and change their lives. Yesterday, I went to Fred Heinlein's funeral. One of your producers there talks about going to Shaker and playing baseball. He knows Fred. Fred inspired so many guys. The tears running down the men's faces in the church yesterday, whose lives were changed by Fred Heinlein, who was a coach who cared about doing the right thing and having integrity. And that's what's different between a Fred Heinlein and a Jim Trestle. Is the minute Jim Tressel knew he was doing wrong, he was acting with personal irresponsibility, without integrity, and unlike Fred Heinlein. Fred Heinlein would have dismissed the players from the team for shaming the team. Fred Heinlein would have turned them in and immediately admitted and forced the wrongdoing to be righted. So that's the difference between a good coach and a lousy coach or one without integrity. And once you sell your soul to winning as the primary you know, function of a coach, you're there to coach. You're there to mold the students. And if they win, great. At Fred's service yesterday, the preacher woman said, you know, Fred's greatest pride was that the Shaker Heights administration put no pressure upon him to win. Well, wait a minute, though. No. Wait, Ken, 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 the high school level and, and the co- is not a business. The you collegiate level is a business. Uh, it's not supposed to be, is it? No, it is supposed to be. It is. It's a $68 million a year revenue stream for the okay. university. So the minute money's involved, yes. integrity, personal integrity yes. and personal responsibility vanish. Yes, exactly. So, so all these people are corrupt is what you're saying. Yes. You have to be corrupt to succeed in college sports and pro sports. It, it, to a certain mm, degree, yes. some more corrupt than others, but to a certain degree, you have to be. Like, Trestle isn't a corrupt person like some other coaches may be, but he is corrupt. Because they all are. They all are. Uh, so, it, you cannot right, so deal then, with a so hundred. When you we remove the common denominator, they all are. What you're left with then are coaches who are left to do the other part of the coaching job, which to a lot of people is to mold the people they are coaching. And whatever. Ken, is your job is not to mold people when you're coaching at the answer. collegiate level or the answer. professional level. The, I'm not, the I'm reason gonna, I, you give me a headache. The reason that Mr. Heinlein was able to I coached against him. He was much older than me. I coached. I know Fred. Very, I knew Fred very well years ago. Beat the crap out of his Shaker teams, also. Yeah, sure you did. But the we reason did. the reason that he was able to mold kids is because he had fifteen of them on his team. It's a little bit different when you have one hundred and fifty. And inspiring is different than instilling. We're not saying that a coach can't inspire his team. Of course they can. Coaches can give great speeches, but they can't give you something you don't already have inside of you. And that's what we, I, we've been trying to tell you all day here. Inspiring is not the same thing. Yes. A coach is not going to make, Fred Hyland is not going to make a kid an academic All-American. Neither is Jim Tressel. Unless they could already do it. I don't know why people don't understand that. I mean, I don't know. They'll, they'll argue that point. 
And as far as the corruption goes, college sports is a business. Why do people won't admit that? It's a business. $68 million Ohio State took in the year 2008. Their football program, $68 million. That's a business. They won't admit it, but it's a business. It, it, it's the reason that women's sports exist at the collegiate level. Because they don't draw flies. And the football program pays for it. It's a reason a lot of programs exist at the collegiate level. Because football programs and basketball programs who get a lot of attendance and make a lot of money pay for the rest of the sports. It all goes into a pool, basically. But there are levels of corruption. Some people are more corrupt than others. An example, I mean, you know, you had, you had uh, John Gotti, pretty corrupt, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm, yep. And you had Jimmy DeMora. <laughs> I mean, there's levels of corruption. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there's a lot of corruption out there. And to exist, listen, th- this, it's... I'm a, I would take this to my grave. I don't care if the, Jesus Christ came down and sat on his counter right now and told me I'm wrong, I'd argue with him. There is no way you are going to deal with 150 collegiate athletes who are spoiled rotten, who all think they are Jim Brown or O.J. Simpson or whoever, Wayne Gretzky, whatever sport it may be, A-Rod, I don't care who did there's no way you're going to deal with 150 kids a year and not cover up something for one of them. No way. You're telling me that it's – it's. You, think about raising three kids. Try to get through a year with three kids without something going wrong. Impossible. As, as a father or a mother. Not take 150 of them. Who all they want to do is party, drink, and screw everything that walks that's got boobs. And they ain't got no money. And there's people tugging at them every direction, handing them money, wanting to, to sign here, do this. They got to give you that. I'll give you this. And then throw the drugs in. And they're not brilliant people to begin with, most of them. So they can be very easily tricked or coerced. If I was a top-notch athlete, and I was 19, 20 years old. And I had all those temptations. Only the good Lord knows what I would have done at Ohio State University as one of the t- high-profile athletes. Where I, When I walked around down there, everybody knew who I was. Every broad wanted to go to bed with you. Uh, every guy wanted to give you money. People were trying to influence you with gambling and fixing games and, and drugs and women and You'd be you'd be dead or in jail. Oh my God, in heaven! So to think these coaches, on a yearly basis, don't have something to cover up, like Jim Tressel tried to cover up the tattoo thing. You you have to be a screwball to take. I mean, think about managing 150 of these screwballs. Think about it. So you're not going to believe what just happened during that uh, top of the hour break. Oh my good God. So, as you know, Seth, Trib, and I go downstairs to take the temperature outside, see how much rain's falling, and all that. So, we get in the elevator, head down, and at the third floor, the elevator stops, which often happens because that's when people from the third floor get on, and then we eventually get right. down and we can take the temperature. Yeah. This time, the doors didn't open. Not at all. What? We didn't were, open at all. We were stuck on the elevator for... 25 minutes. No, well, that, that's not possible. Probably two or three minutes. But let me just tell you what happened. We stop, and I kind of go, oh, we're stuck. Seth loses his freaking mind. You, like nobody's business. He starts hopping around, banging all the buttons. So <laughs> I hit buttons. every single button. <laughs> He's hitting alarms. Oh, my goodness. He calls 911, which the elevator has one of those things. By the way, right now, Trib is downstairs. Because we never got a chance to take the temperature. So he took the, the stairs downstairs to take care of the temperature and all that that we have to do. But we're... So Seth is on the phone with 911 yelling, I'm having a panic attack! I'm having a panic attack! <laughs> I was having a panic attack. I was terrified. And I'm trying to rip the doors open. I am decently afraid of elevators. But I've been stuck on the this particular elevator before. 
five years ago with Brad Sussman. He was filling in for Wills one morning, and he and I get stuck in the elevator four four fifty in the morning, and he ends up doing the show from the elevator for a couple segments. It was funny. I'm actually disappointed that we didn't end up stuck for longer because this would have been a whole lot better and funnier if we'd been stuck in the elevator. Oh, you would have seen tears. <laughs> but There were almost tears right then. But what this brings up is a really difficult situation for Seth because Seth is a very large man and a fairly lazy man. At so times. we work on the fourth floor. That's eight flights of stairs. Right. You're scared of the elevator that you've now been stuck on with me and Triv, and there's not a whole lot of room in this elevator with Seth, Triv, and I all in one elevator. From now on, are you taking the stairs, or are you going to trust the elevator again? It, not even tomorrow. Today at 6.30, are you walking down the stairs? At, at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, I'm, I'm walking down the stairs, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Now, tomorrow, different story, because I'm not going to walk up and down the stairs all day long, no. So... He, he needs a good night's sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to think about that. 12 hours and we're good. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> Elevators are great. But I have to be in the elevator with somebody else. The neat thing, too, was that Triv, with his superhuman bionic strength, we didn't even wait for the fire department. He opened the doors manually. And if you've ever been in an elevator or outside an elevator, that's not easy to do. Triv did it by himself. Open the really? doors. Well, the thing yes. was is that I was yelling hysterically. Yes. And then other people came off the third floor, and you could hear them right outside the door. And Seth starts banging. I'm banging. No! <laughs> Open the door! How did I miss all this? I'm so disappointed. You didn't hear me push the alarm 14 <laughs> no. times? No, it didn't go off. Screaming to 911. 911 telling him, sir, try just breathe and just calm down. And he's like, oh! She goes, are you having any difficulty breathing? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> that difficulty breathing was from walking from the studio to the elevator. It had nothing to do with being stuck in it. Right. It has to do with heart disease, not, you know. So at this point, I'm hoping that Triv has gotten the temperature by now. Uh, we'll go ahead and do an early traffic for you getting home. That was spooky. That was totally spooky. I've never been trapped in an elevator. I'm a little claustrophobic. Yeah, me too. And that was spooky, especially breathing the same air Seth was breathing mm -hmm. in that confined area. I really started to get nervous. Did you see me like almost light a cigarette in the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> My God, this building's got to do something. The elevators break every other day. Yeah. How did I miss this? You weren't in the elevator. Don't forget Joe Tate and Andre Knott, 705, right here in a big one today. But I knew those elevator doors, if you grabbed them, you could pry them open with your hands. Well, and you showed that. Thank God we were only one floor, was it about a foot and a half step down? Yeah. From wasn't. the third floor. Yeah. If we'd have been in the middle of floors, we'd have been really stuck there for a while. Yes. I would have had to lift you each up individually, my bare hands. I didn't like that. Well, Neither did I. The thought crossed my mind that we might all die. In a little calmer way than it crossed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got a focus group tonight. I'm not sure. You know, I got big plans uh, at the end of the month. I'm not sure. I'm going on vacation. I'm not sure I really wanted to, you know, to go that way in that elevator. No. I mean, I like you guys, but I don't want to die with Seth and Triff. That was crazy. How are we supposed to you really do the this doors? show? Seth? <laughs> yeah. I will admit one thing. What's that? You are a true sissy. <laughs> what? Yeah. How do you mean? Why, why would you say that? You panicked. I'm a man among men. I kept you guys under control in there. <laughs> you are a true punk. <laughs> I was as calm as calm could be. Who this got us bad. out of there? Me, because I was no. banging on the walls till people came running. Who got us out of there? <laughs> With your superhuman strength, you opened up the doors. But I'm convinced it was my hitting the alarm 14 times and yelling for help that got those people out there. Here, here's Goldman. Oh, Triv, you're going to get your fingers stuck. <laughs> I produce radio shows. I don't produce elevator escapes. I apologize. What would you guys do without me? Seriously. <laughs> we would not have jobs. That's awesome. The image of you pulling apart the elevator doors. It's like Iron that's, Man. That's really kind of hot. How, cr how crazy would it be right now if we heard the elevator collapse? Oh. From the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> 
then you would have actually saved our lives. All I can see is it start <laughs> moving as I'm jumping out onto the third floor. My God. I, I didn't enjoy that at all. Uh, Rob, you're in the air, Rob. Hey, uh, hey Mike. Uh, I just wanted to know if you, if you have any thoughts on Charlie Sheen, uh, his most recent um, comment. And, and I guess I want to say, uh, are you... Do you admit you were wrong about the way you were reading him? I mean, you and a few others I'd heard were trying to say that he had this all planned out and that this guy's a genius and some type of a performance well, artist. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm still wrong, though. You think this? You think he's got this planned out? Well, can we let it play out before you criticize me? I think it's playing out. Well, let, think- let, let, let's give it some time. Let's see what comes out of this for Charlie, all right? Mm-hmm. I remember when I said the st- stock market was going to go way down after the election. Mm-hmm. Well, I was proven wrong there. All right, but we have to we have to give it some time, okay? Let, yeah, and I, 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 I might be to- I might be totally wrong, Rob. But let's just let's just wait a little bit, okay? Uh, all right, all, all right. right, okay, fair yeah. enough. Uh, I'll just let's just see what happens. Uh, Tom, you're in the air, Tom. Yeah, Trip, quick story. Elevator story. And I was once stuck in an elevator in the Hoover Dam during an earthquake. Get out of here. Uh, absolutely. We thought it was the worst elevator ride of our life. But if you've ever been to the, I know you've been to Vegas a lot of times. If you've ever gone to the Hoover Dam. I've been. I have went down that elevator in the Hoover Dam. Yeah, they, they pack you in there like sardines. Well, we thought it was the worst elevator ride of our life coming up, shaking, and then it stops. And then it starts back up, and we get to the top, and, I, and of course, I have to make a comment. I'm like, ooh, it must be an earthquake. And we get up, and le- literally people are throwing up in the Lake Mead. And we're like, well, what happened? You didn't feel the earthquake? So, oh. yeah, we were in, in, in the Hoover Dam during an earthquake. Yeah, and mm. well, I, 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 I can relate there because I've taken that tour of the Hoover Dam, and I went down that elevator and up that elevator. Uh, have you ever been in a Hoover? No. 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 Except... <laughs> I've been in the one in the St. Louis Arch. The, the arches, they put yeah. you in like a little egg type elevator type thing. Oh, it's tiny. It's a bitsy. That, I'll tell you one thing you have to do in your lifetime. I, 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 you know what? I think because of 9-11, they stopped it, though. I may, I may be wrong. I, I could be wrong here. You probably could Google it and find out. I don't know if they still have the tours of the Hoover Dam in Las Vegas there. Well, right outside of Las Vegas, I should say. But you have to take a tour of that dam. With a guide. Yeah. And they explain to you how it was built and everything. Mm-hmm. You, you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't believe. One, when you see it, it's one thing. When you go in it with a guide and they explain how it was built and everything and how they did it, you almost can't believe that man could do that. Hmm. It's one of those things where you cannot believe that human beings could have done that, especially when they did it years ago. How old is the Hoover Dam, does it say? Uh, one second. It's one of the most amazing tours I've ever had in my whole entire life. They still, uh, 1937. Right. Oh, that, wait, that's when the tour started. Hold on. Um, but they still do the tours. You still can do the tours of the Hoover Dam. They still do it? Oh, I think they closed the road that goes over the Hoover Dam. That makes sense. A lot, a lot of dams are doing that now, because and they're not just there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, this, this is one of my points, so we can get off trestle here for a couple of minutes, then we'll get back on them. It opened in 1936. Yeah. To build that thing in, in the 30s, mm. is, when you tour it, you won't believe that mankind could have done that. You talk about the pyramids, yeah, and how in the hell did they do that back then? Same way with the Hoover Dam. It, it's one of the most amazing structures, especially when it's explained to you. When you just see it, it's one thing. But when it's it, the construction of it is explained to you by a, a tour guide, I, I was just like in awe the whole time I was there. One of the most interesting times I've ever had in my life. That, and you know the other thing that interests me the most that I've seen in the United States of America, and then I'll get to... The Grand Canyon. No. The Washington Monument. Lake Tahoe. Hmm. The clarity of the water is 98 feet. Wow. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful bodies of water I've ever been any. Without it, the most beautiful body of water I've ever been around. Hmm. It's And the scenery and the 
It just those are two things that I, I enjoyed the most: the Hoover Dam and Lake Tahoe. But anyway, getting back to closing the road over Hoover Dam, this is my point, all right? We have soldiers in Afghanistan fighting a war that no one even knows what the hell they're doing there. We have a a, a military base in Saudi Arabia. Who cares about Saudi Arabia? Let them defend themselves. They're billionaires, zillionaires, trillionaires. And And here in the United States of America, we have to close a road over a dam because of terrorists. Because of the threat. Why couldn't those soldiers be here protecting the United States of America? So we don't have to close roads that go over a beautiful dam like the Hoover Dam in Nevada. See, that's the things that just fry my ass in this about this country. It's absolutely fry my ass. We're protecting every other. Who cares what's going on in Libya? Let them blow each other up. Let all them countries blow each Who cares? We got our own problems here. I get so frustrated closing a road that goes over Hoover Dam in America. We're taking away our freedoms, our enjoyments, and we're putting our soldiers all over the world fighting wars in caves, looking for uh, Osama bin Laden that doesn't even exist. It just aggravates me. It really does. Hey, I'm Mike Tirasano for Sedlak Interiors, furniture store in Solon. (laughs) <laughs> I don't even know where to start when I do this commercial. I mean, it's one of the most amazing facilities I've ever seen in my whole entire life. It's family-owned since 1947. The Sedlaks do a tremendous job there. You even have a greeter when you walk in the door. Over 100,000 square feet of furniture. Clocks, rugs, artwork, outdoor furniture, mattresses, bedding. I mean, they got it all there. They got a nice furniture. They got unbelievable furniture it's just in the, you have to see it to believe it please if you're looking for furniture go to Sedlax and in Sol- Solon Sedlak interiors in Solon on Solon Road you you will not believe it you will not I mean it's the finest furniture store that I've ever seen in my whole entire life it really is <sighs> I vented there about closing the road over Hoover Dam that was important I think yeah and doesn't it frustrate you, things like that? Of, I, and here we are in Afghanistan? You know what frustrates me even, and I understand your frustration with that, but what frustrates me even more is the fact that we're talking about putting up border fences and electronic technology to make sure that we stop illegal immigration. If we just brought back the soldiers that are fighting wars we can't win elsewhere and put them on the border, we'd be good to go. And let them do their job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not Which tie their hands. Protect the United States. Right. Let them do their job. Yes. Yeah, stop people who are doing illegal things. Then that would be the greatest thing in the world. But can't do that. Yeah. We'll get back to Trussell momentarily. Trust me on that one. Let me take just one phone call real quick. Uh, Joe, you're in the air, Joe. Hey, Mike. Thanks. Real yeah. quick. I thought you'd be at the Cedar Lee tonight. No, I got a focus group tonight. That's more important than seeing the premiere of that movie? That movie ain't going nowhere. Oh, come on. It's going to be huge. We're going to do a whole mafia show with uh, Rick Perello here tomorrow. Okay. Well, or as uh, w- w- another wise guy in, in radio called him, Percello. <laughs> yes. No, they're good, they're good uh, friends. They're good friends, though. Him, he knows a lot per- about it. Uh, he's going to have Rick Percello on. We're <laughs> going to have Rick Perello on, who wrote the book tomorrow. Right, right. Well, hey, see, I'm doing Goldman's and Seth's job. Yeah. I'm doing show prep with you now. Yeah. No, I, I, I am definitely going to go see the movie. I'll probably go see it Monday. All right. Yeah. So I'm, I'll probably go see it Monday. So. Uh, Supposed to be a good movie, I guess. The book is amazing. I'm halfway through it because I decided to read it for tomorrow. I don't want to sound like a wise guy because I never was one. Never uh, got involved in that type of life. But I was around all that growing up on the east side of Cleveland with different families that I hung around with. So I was around all that, not mentioning any names. Trust me on that one. Never wanted to get involved. I was telling Goldman that because I just... Knew the lifestyle was a dead end street, but the movie's not going to tell me much. But it'll be—I want to see it though. Right. I've, I already know um, pretty much everything that's in the movie, but it's, I can't wait to see it. You know, I can't. I, I'm probably going to do that this weekend. Uh, don't have a lot of. I can't personally go tonight. I hung around with Mike Fredo, uh, the son of Mike Fredo, who Danny Green killed. Mm-hmm. And they killed him over. Danny Green killed him over the garbage business. Fredo shot at him, and Danny Green shot back and killed him. 
In fact, he was with Gus Palladino when he got killed. I don't know if that's in the book or in a movie. Um, is and it? I think he's the one who drove him to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. And left him there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that lifestyle, never I never won any part of it, but I was around that lifestyle my whole entire life. So, um, I don't know. Danny Green is my hero. I can't wait to talk to, talk to Rick tomorrow. Danny Green was tough, but Danny Green was, wasn't a very bright guy. And what I mean by that, he was, and I don't mean to insult Danny Green, uh, or praise him, but I mean to tell you the truth here, Danny Green was fighting a battle he couldn't win. I tried to explain yep. that to you yep. earlier. He just couldn't win. Yeah, He could have went about his business and had his own little underworld thing going on himself. He just didn't have to step on any toes, but he tried to um, take on the Italian mafia at the time. He had no chance. No chance. It was only a matter of time before they killed him. And I think he knew that. Or if he didn't know it, then I really uh, challenge his intelligence. But he was fighting a, a battle he could not win. We'll, we'll, we'll do a whole show on that tomorrow, and we'll get back to Trussell in just a few seconds, I promise you.